story time about how I ghosted my boyfriend of five years. I know that sounds so bad, but he was a thief, a liar, and a cheater. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Like I said, my boyfriend and I have been together for five years. We met in college and were basically inseparable for the first two years. On our third year of dating, I started working as a personal assistant for a big celebrity in LA. This meant I had to move to LA. You see, we lived in Texas at the time. Well, things got really bad after I moved. He wouldn't take my phone calls. He would totally ignore my text messages and he would go out all the time. For the first few months, I tried to keep the peace so I wouldn't say anything, but eventually it got to the point where we wouldn't speak for an entire week. Luckily, my best friend still lived in Texas, so I had her follow him around for two days. And you'll never guess what she found. Shout out to my bestie. She showed up to his apartment early in the morning and waited for him to go to work, which he did. When he was done with work, she went back to his job to follow him back home. This is when she told me that he actually went to some girl's house. He didn't end up going home at all that day. This man actually spent the night at some girl's house. The whole time, I was trying to call him and text him, and he did not take my phone calls. My best friend even took pictures of his car in this girl's driveway. Since I had this girl's address, I looked her up on the internet. I even found out her phone number because I paid some service online. And of course, I found her Instagram account. She had been posting on her story about hanging out with some guy. But the thing is, she didn't show the guy's face. She only showed his hand. Guess what? I recognize his hand in the picture because he has a tattoo on his pinky. So of course, I took screenshots. Later that day, my best friend followed him to a bar. At this bar, he met up with another girl. Unfortunately, I didn't have any information about this girl. I just knew that she drove a green car. My best friend followed him again the following day. He went to the beach, ran some errands, and then met up with another girl. Yes, we have three girls in two days. This girl was different because this girl was a friend of mine when I lived in Texas. And I knew she always had a crush on him, but she could never admit it. They went out to dinner and then back to her place. And again, my best friend sent me pictures of everything, so I had all the receipts. Side note, I think of my best friend spying on him and it makes me laugh. I hope you can all say you have best friends that are like that. Oh, here's what I did. I got on the first flight back to Texas and did not tell my boyfriend that I was showing up at his apartment the following day. But guess what I find in his bed? Part two is story time about how i ghosted my boyfriend of five years I show up to my boyfriend's apartment to catch him in the act and you'll never guess what i found in his bed claim this is not my story time i was sending me on instagram my lying cheating boyfriend had given me a key to his apartment so i unlock the apartment and make my way towards his bedroom really quietly when i walk into his bedroom i find him curled up in his bed with another girl he's holding her in his arms totally fast asleep the worst part is i recognize the girl that was with him it was one of the girls who i used to be friends with in texas i walked backwards and closed the door behind me that's when i just started to cry I couldn't believe that he had done this to me. While I was working my butt off in LA trying to make a future for us, he was in Texas dating three women at once. No wonder he never picked up my phone calls or even texted me back. So here's what I did. I had printed out all the receipts I had, all the pictures of him hanging out with other girls that my best friend took while she was spying on him. I laid out all the pictures on his kitchen counter and I left him a letter too. I told him in the letter that I could never forgive him and for him to never contact me again. Oh yeah, and that I wanted him to pay me back the $3,000 he owed me. You see, when we first started dating, he needed a loan for his car. I helped him out and gave him $3,000, which he promised to pay me. Obviously, we dated for five years and I never saw any of that money. So aside from him being a cheater and a liar, he was a thief. I left the note and the cards and left his apartment. I went to my parents' house and stayed with them for the weekend. Of course, my boyfriend, I mean ex, showed up to my parents' house and begged to talk to me. My father told him to leave me alone and to never speak to me again. My dad told him that when he was ready to pay him the money, that made me laugh. I was totally crushed. I blocked him on everything, even through email. Of course, he got on someone else's phone and tried to contact me that way, but I never replied. He sends me emails every now and then and promises to pay me the money back. A few days ago, he sent me a picture of an engagement ring. He keeps telling me that I'm the best thing that he's ever had, and that he's sorry and blah, blah, blah. I kind of want to reply to him, but I know that that's a bad idea, right? Or should I just talk to him and see what he has to say? What do you guys think? Story time about how I caught my roommate with my fiance three days ago. Claire, this is not my story time. I was sent to me on Instagram. My fiance and I have been together for three years. He took me on a trip last January and proposed. He's been nothing but an amazing fiance. My families get along super well. My family loves him and he's so kind and gracious to them. On the other hand, my roommate is terrible. He claims to be a model on Instagram, but that's not really what she does. She's actually got a couple of sweet puppies, if you know what I mean. In the past, I've helped her out so much with money because she's always broke. I even loaned her two grand just last month to repair her car. My family hates her and they think she's super toxic. I have a soft spot for her because we know each other since high school and I know that she struggled a lot then. I'm a very kind and giving person, but she's totally taken advantage of that. Funnily enough, my fiance hated my roommate when he first met her. He thought the same thing my family did. She constantly monopolized my time. And if I was out on a date with my fiance, if she needed something, she would call me and ask me to go to the supermarket and pick up apples. 
apples and stuff like that. About two months ago, I had to put my foot down. I'm in the process of planning my wedding with one of my best friends and my roommate is totally stressing me out. He continues to criticize every single thing that I pick. I asked her to be one of my bridesmaids, huge mistake, and she made a fuss about the dress. She wanted a backless dress, but I didn't want that for my bridesmaids at all. I'm not trying to plan an Instagram wedding here. She was so upset about the bridesmaid dress that she actually didn't speak to me for about a week. I had to beg for her to talk to me. Eventually, she told me that she didn't feel sexy in the dress and that she really wanted something she could shine in. My best friend was with us when she told me that, so my best friend quickly corrected her and told me that the only person that needed to be shining that day was me because I'm the bridesmaid. My roommate got super upset and told me that she didn't want my best friend coming over to our apartment anymore. Obviously, that was going to be a huge no because she was helping me plan the wedding. So instead, I had to get my fiance to come to the apartment and help me out. My fiance works a lot and he's constantly on his phone. He also travels for work a lot, so I knew that he wasn't going to be able to help me all the time. One day, I come home from work and find my fiance and my roommate sitting on the couch chatting. I actually got really happy because I thought maybe they're trying to be friends now. I wanted them to get along. My fiance and I knew that we were going to move in together right after the wedding, so I didn't have a problem with them becoming friends. Fast forward to four days ago. My fiance had his bachelor party and I had my bachelorette party. I had so much fun at my party. My roommate was on her best behavior, but she actually told me that she needed to leave early, which I thought was super strange. I get home from my party at around 3 a.m. I was wondering about my fiance, so I decided to call him. The phone goes directly to voicemail. A few minutes later, I get a message from one of his friends. It's a picture of my fiance and my roommate on the couch kissing. Then I get a phone call from the guy that sent me the picture. He told me he thought I needed to know what was going on. He told me that my roommate showed up to my fiance's bachelor party and that she was flirting with him the whole night. He also told me that she was pressuring my fiance to drink. My fiance has never been a big drinker, so it surprised me that he was even drinking at all. He sent me some more pictures of my fiance and my roommate. They were dancing and chatting the whole night. So I decided to show up to the bachelor party unannounced. When I walk in, there they are on the couch. My fiance was pretty inebriated and he was kind of confused too. My roommate, on the other hand, was totally fine. She jumped up from the couch and asked me what I was doing there. I asked her, what are you doing here? She actually laughed and told me that my fiance invited her. Part two is up. That's when I find my fiance and my roommate sitting on the couch together really snug. Claimers is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. Unfortunately, I did not find them kissing or anything. I asked my roommate what she was doing there. She laughed and told me that my fiance invited her. My fiance was totally out of it since he had been drinking. That's when I pull up my phone and show them the picture of them kissing. They both start to deny it, but I'm like, how can you deny it? I have proof. My roommate told me that she needed to leave and she literally ran away. I actually had to wait for my fiance to sober up for a few hours before he could actually talk. That's when he told me he didn't remember anything. My roommate is refusing to speak to me and told me that she doesn't want to be in the wedding anymore. And I'm like, yeah, of course you're not. The only thing she said was that my fiance came on to her. My family hates him and her now. My parents don't want me to get married, but the wedding is a week away. My fiance swears that she did something to him. He's begging me for forgiveness and I don't know what to do. Please help. Am I wrong for refusing to walk my daughter down the aisle? My daughter, 26 female, and I haven't spoken in years. When she was 15, we found out that she wasn't my biological daughter and my wife had cheated on me years ago with a friend. As it turns out, this so-called friend was suddenly interested in playing dad. My wife and I divorced, my daughter learned the truth, and I told her I still loved her no matter what. Of course, she was interested now in getting to know her biological father, and while it hurt, I tried to accept that. She started pulling away from me after that. Even when trying to still do things together as a family, she was no longer interested. The last straw was when she was 20 and living at my house. We were arguing because she had dropped from her college courses, hasn't done anything for three months, and was mad because I told her she either needed to go to school or work if she wants to stay here for free. She told me I'm just, oh, I can't even read it. So, so mean. She told me I'm not her real dad, so stop pretending like I am and she'll just go to stay with her real father. Ugh. Ugh. That broke me, honestly. But I told her if that's how she really feels, then there's really nothing left to say between us. And she did move out to go live with him. I was depressed for a very long time and I drank a lot. My son, 24 male, was my only reason to keep moving forward. For the first couple of years, I reached out to my daughter. She wanted no contact, and I learned to accept that and moved on. It helped me find more peace in my life. My son stopped talking to her for a while over this and was angry with her. They still chat sometimes, which doesn't bother me at all. Through him, I learned her biological father died in October 2019. She reached out to me first, saying she knows that we haven't talked in a while, but wants to ask me if I'd be willing to walk her down the aisle. After a pretty long message about how much she hurt me in the past with her actions, I told her no. 
She didn't want me to be her father anymore, so I learned to no longer view her as my daughter. This turned into a fight between us because, according to her, it's not her fault she wanted to know her real dad. And I agreed with her it's not, but what was her fault was how she treated me ever since. In my mind, I know if he hadn't passed, we wouldn't even be speaking right now. It ended with telling her I hope she enjoys her wedding, but I want no part of her life. My son told me she's ranting to my family that I'm ruining her date and she thought parents are supposed to love their kids unconditionally. Oh, what a gaslighting bitch. Fuck her. Oh, I can't be swearing so much. Sorry. My brother seems to think that now I am being an asshole and that this is my chance to be in her life again, but I have no interest in that. Still seems that everyone has a strong opinion on it and that I'm making it difficult for my daughter to have the wedding she wants when it would mean a lot to her. My son is on my side, but the comments are still wearing me down and just for the sake of my sanity, am I being an asshole? Am I wrong for telling a social worker the real reason my sister wants to foster kid i 28 female have a sister who's 36 for the sake of the story i'll just call her jane jane is married to bob and they have two kids boy and a girl my niece and nephew are wonderful kids and no trouble at all they fight as siblings do but nothing big i love them now for about two years i did live with my sister it was a miserable time that really affected our relationship she saw me as free labor money and babysitting even when i managed to get a small part-time job she demanded i hand over nearly half my pay or get out it was hell as she took complete advantage of me i moved out as soon as i could and we have little to no contact outside of family gatherings. Now, after I moved out, she started complaining how she has no help with the kids and never gets a break. I babysit sometimes, but I have made it clear just because I'm off work doesn't mean I want an eight-hour day with my niece and nephew. Anyway, she started talking about how she wanted to foster a kid. Not a kid, but a teenager. I pressed her for more info on this, and she said she wants to adopt a teenager so she has a live-in babysitter for her kids. This is her logic. I want a kid around 16 or 17, you know, someone who may have been in the system for a while. They can share a bedroom with your nephew. She only has a three-bedroom house or sleep in the garage. They can help me with housework, chores, cook, and help me with my business. She bakes and sells cookies on the side. Also babysit the kids so me and Bob can go out sometimes or have some time alone. They'll be so grateful for a home and won't complain. I won't have to pay them at all. And when they turn 18, I can just sign up for another foster kid. A teenager will be so much easier than a little kid and they will be grateful just to have a roof, food, siblings if they have been separated from their real ones and clothes. What the hell? How do people think of this shit? What? What am I reading? I was horrified told her it was a horrible idea, but she didn't listen to me. She went on with it anyways. About a month ago, a social worker showed up at my apartment to ask me some questions about my sister. She had put me down as a character witness or something like that. I immediately told the social worker why my sister wanted to foster a kid and how she treated me when I lived with her. The lady then thanked me. My sister called crying saying that she wouldn't be considered for any adoptions or fosters. The social worker told her that they thought her home and her weren't a good fit. She asked if I said anything and I told the truth. She went off on me, hung up, and we haven't spoken since. A couple family members are on her side. They think foster kids are effing dogs or something and would be so happy just to have a roof and would gladly do all the housework. So am I wrong here? What? What? Ugh. Don't have kids if you can't take care of them. Like, it's not... You don't have to have kids if you have... Why? What? Ugh. 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 People are fucking stupid. Am I wrong for blowing up at my dad for asking me to pay for a family dinner? I, 27 male, lost my mom at 15 in a road accident. I was a fairly airheaded kid in school and was graded academically. My dad, 48 male, remarried to Isabel 10 months later for my care. The two years after my mom's passing were extremely hard on me. Isabel was temperamental with me, sometimes nice or almost ignoring me. She had a son who was two years older. We practically had no relationship as he moved for college around the time they got married. When I was 17, I was going through old pictures. I ran into some domestic pictures of Isabel and my dad. I realized many of them were from Seattle. Only time my dad was there was when he had been working on for weeks the year before my mom died. There had been a fight between my parents about the on-sites not bringing the family extra money. I realized that my dad was probably cheating on my mom with Isabel prior to her death. I don't know if my mom knew this, though I think so. I kept it quiet because Isabel was pregnant with my stepsister at this time. I found out later that year that my mom had left me as her sole inheritor, which was quite some money. Her parents' inheritance money and 50% of the house. This had helped me pay for college. My dad challenged this will, causing some delay in executing it. Some words were said about my mom, which I didn't like. My dad also had taken 6000 from my account. I let it go because I honestly was happy to have money for college. After moving out of state to college, I've been low contact with my dad. I had a court wedding due to COVID and have a seven month old now. Two weeks ago, I was in town and my dad decided to meet me and my family, which I agreed to. It was at a nicer restaurant in town and along came Isabel, my stepsister, and Isabel's son, his girlfriend, and two kids. The dinner was good until Isabel brought the house up and mentioned my stepbrother's wife losing her job. I deflected this to a private chat with my dad. No fucking way am I giving it up. This made the conversation much more difficult. When the check came, my dad asked me to take care of the bill and I refused, asking them to split it. I had no idea everyone was coming and had no contact with any of them prior to this. 
My dad started to bring up how I had a nest egg and my mom babied me. Suddenly, my stepbrother said, dude, just get it. You'll be fine. I kind of saw red at this moment and I told him to shut the fuck up and that my mom gave me the money because my dad was an adulterer. Isabel got in the middle and asked me not to talk to my dad like that and my wife tried to calm me down. I said I don't want anything to do with this family and to keep our relationship just between me and my dad. Anyways, more words were shared and I handed them the cash from my side and left. My wife said I shouldn't have acted like that but still had my side. So, was I wrong here for my reaction? Am I wrong for asking my girlfriend not to eat so much? I know the title sounds bad, but this is a pretty specific situation, so please hear me out. I, 26 male, have been dating a woman we will call Ashley, 26 female, for about three months. Ashley grew up financially well off and relatively privileged and has been a point of friction in our relationship, with her not understanding slash grasping the level of poverty I and my family grew up with. It is also relevant to the story that Ashley is a heavier person and is a very vocal advocate for body positivity and will very assertively stand up to anyone fat shaming herself or others. The other person who is relevant to the story is my grandma who is 70 years old. My grandma is a wonderful woman but she is both very proud and very broke. She likes to have us over for dinner and is an excellent cook, but financially, she can't really afford it. She refuses to take any money from me or anyone else and won't let anyone break food, saying it's her responsibility to take care of the family. She also takes offense if you turn down the invitation. About a month ago, we had dinner with her and Ashley liked the food so much, she went back for a second and a third large portion. This is not done in my family. We all take a single small portion as the leftovers are what my grandmother has to eat for the week. So Ashley taking more meant my grandma didn't have anything to eat for the rest of the week. After the dinner, I explained this to Ashley and she was shocked. I tried to bring my grandmother food, but she refused the charity out of pride. My grandmother has invited us for dinner again this weekend. Before we go, I tried to have a discussion with Ashley, reiterating my grandmother's financial situation and asking that she try to only take a single smaller portion so my grandmother can have food for the week. I said we can go eat again after the meal if she was still hungry. Ashley got very angry at this and said she will not be shamed for her eating and she will not limit her food and that no one other than her decides when she's had enough food. She also said I was fat shaming her. This whole ordeal has highlighted a lot of incompatibility issues and I don't know if the relationship is going to last but just want some other opinions on this if I'm the asshole. So am I wrong for asking my girlfriend to limit her eating? No bro, your poor grandma needs to eat too man. Have some sympathy. Am I wrong for telling my sister her rainbow baby isn't special? I, 27 female, have a set of twins, Ben and Betty. They just turned six. My sister, 32 female, has Connor who is four. My sister and her husband lost their first baby due to SIDS. It was devastating for the whole family and I was behind my sister 100% of the way. I couldn't imagine what it was like. Anyway, when she found out she was pregnant with Connor, we were all excited. The pregnancy went well and Connor got a good bill of health. I love my sister and I love my nephew, but my sister is convinced that because he's her rainbow baby, that that means he can do whatever he wants. Connor is incredibly spoiled and a brat. He throws fits to get his way, hits, kicks, cries, whatever it takes. My sister and her husband give him no discipline. He's their rainbow baby, so that is their excuse for his bad behavior. Their lives are to serve for whatever Connor wants. My twins just turned six and we had a small party for them. Everyone was having a good time except for Connor. He wanted cake, didn't like the games, wanted to watch TV, wanted ice cream now, didn't want other kids to touch him, and etc. Basically, the whole party, Connor threw a tantrum. The final straw came at present time. My husband went to get the gifts out of the living room, only to find Connor had ripped nearly all of them open. My sister made excuses, saying he was just excited and wanted to play with my kids' new toys. I lost it. I told her that Connor isn't special, that he's a brat, and he's been ruining the party since he got here. My sister immediately went on that he's her rainbow baby, and he didn't mean it, and maybe I should have put the presents where he couldn't get to them. They were in the living room and the party was outside. No one was inside. I lost my temper. I know I did. This was my kid's party though. I said some nasty things to her. I told her that Connor isn't a baby anymore and he's not special and she's raising a self-centered brat who will grow up to be a self-centered adult. She left the party and then my parents called. They said they understood my frustrations and everything about the situation. Then they said they still feel like I should apologize to my sister. Why? Because I have two healthy kids while she lost one and she's still having to deal with it? I told them no, my sister should apologize for how her son acted at the party. My husband and the guests who were at the party are on my side. My sister hasn't really spoken to me in a few days, just posted passive aggressive things on social media, which I just blocked. So am I wrong here? Story time about how my ex broke into my apartment and trashed my entire apartment and ruined every single thing that I owned. This claim is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, my relationship with my ex is terribly toxic. We actually met each other on a dating app, I know. He was absolutely charming on the first date. Second date, not so much. And third date, he was absolutely awful. But I just started falling in love with him, like literally from the moment I met him. I had it in my head that I was gonna make him a good boyfriend, like me. <laughs> I seriously, honestly thought that he would change and 
just become a better guy. He quickly wanted to be exclusive, but did not want to call me his girlfriend. Oh, and he would get jealous about every little single thing. If I wanted to go out with friends, he would get upset. If I didn't answer my phone or text him right away, he would get upset. Mind you, this whole time, he doesn't want to call me his girlfriend. I work as a stylist, but I also model on the side just for some money. Well, he hated this. A week into dating or whatever we were, he told me that I needed to quit modeling. If I didn't quit modeling, that meant that I was for the streets. Because, you know, all models are for the streets. Like the idiot I am, I started passing up on jobs. I even passed up on a Sephora campaign. My modeling agency was really upset. But in my mind, I thought, you know, if I do what he wants, he'll be a good boyfriend. And maybe we can call each other boyfriend and girlfriend. My mom kept insisting that she wanted to meet him, but he said no. Now, when he told me that he didn't want to meet my mom, trust me, I put my foot down. I told him there was absolutely no way I could be in a relationship with anybody who did not want to meet my family. He told me that I was taking things way too seriously. That's when I threw it in his face that he acts like a jealous boyfriend, but still doesn't want to call me his girlfriend. So he explained to me that any girl he talks to has to be only for him. And even if he's not dating you, you still have to be only for him. Ugh. Then he told me that he was dating two other girls. I had a suspicion, but I never thought he would actually admit it to me. I told him that we needed a break and that I didn't want to see him for a few weeks. This made him insanely jealous. He told me that I was a liar and that I was probably hooking up with someone else the whole time I was with him. And yes, I did try to convince him that I wasn't, but he was not having it. I just moved into my new apartment, which I absolutely love. Spent over $3,000 decorating it. I even got CB2 furniture. I made the mistake of giving him a key a few weeks ago. One day I come home from a modeling job and my apartment is completely trashed. Part two is up. I walk into my apartment to find it trashed. At first I thought I had been robbed, but that's when it hit me. It was my ex. Disclaimer, so now my story time. I was sitting on Instagram. The walls in my apartment were smeared with chocolate. There was literally broken glass in the entryway. So I could have stepped in glass. All the mirrors were shattered and broken. My television was on the floor, completely smashed. And there was a hammer right next to my TV. This man took a hammer and smashed my television. He did the same thing to my expensive Vitamix blender. All of my makeup was in the toilet. And yes, there was poo in the toilet too. The sink was full of kitchen condiments where he put all of my expensive perfumes. The bathroom mirror was also smashed. My expensive ass CB2 couch was full of mustard and honey. All of my couch cushions had olive oil on them. I mean, the list goes on and on. I pulled out my phone and started taking picture and video. I called the police and my parents and my parents came right away. Of course, I called my ex and told him that I knew it was him and he denied everything. He said, and I quote, you're crazy and then hung up the cop that came to my apartment was super rude he said that i must have done something really bad in order to deserve this kind of punishment i filed a police report and they told me that i could sue him so far he does not want to pay a single dime he then admitted to me through text messages that he got the idea from a tiktok video and that some other guy had done this to his ex so far i spent 500 dollars just in cleaning services to clean my apartment i'm living back with my parents luckily a judge made him pay me five thousand dollars still not enough he's been calling me and begging me to get back with him what do i freaking do Story time on how I caught both of my best friends cheating on me with my boyfriend. Yes, both of them. So at the time, I was entering college, and one of my best friends went to the same school as me. My other best friend went to the same school as my boyfriend. And our schools were close. We were only like 10 minutes away from each other. Homecoming is when things started to get fishy. I asked my boyfriend if he wanted to come out to our homecoming games, and he said that he was busy. Then, of course, I asked my best friend... But she said she had cheerleading practices because she was trying to become a cheerleader. I don't know. They just always seem busy doing something around the same time. So then the holiday comes up and I visit my boyfriend's family for Christmas. I don't know. Something in me just told me to look at his phone. And he was talking to my best friend, the one he went to school with. And the conversation was just too flirty. So I talked to my other best friend about it that I went to the same school with. And she was like, oh, I always knew something was weird about them too course confronted my boyfriend about it and he said nothing was going on so i decided to play reverse psychology on my best friend come back for part two part two on how i caught my boyfriend cheating on me with two of my best friends like i said i confronted my boyfriend about it and he pretended there was nothing going wrong so i went to my best friend about it and i kind of did like a reverse psychology thing on her I told her that my boyfriend told me everything that was going on. And I was like, did y'all even use protection? Not really knowing what's really going on. And she was like, I'm sorry, it was only a one-time thing. And that she was just drunk one night. And I was like, sis, you practically told her yourself because I was joking. And then she kind of like snitched on my other best friend. She was like, I wasn't the only one, you know. And I, of course, I was like, what you mean? And she said a couple months back when we were in high school that my other best friend had slept with him also. The whole situation was just messy. I ended up cutting off my whole circle. And later on that freshman year, my ex-boyfriend started dating my ex-best friend.
If you are wondering whether or not to hook up with your ex-boyfriend, here is a sign not to. One day, my ex hit me up again. Let's call him Jaden. He hit me up and he asked me if I was single. I said yes. He told me that he was single too. And honestly, I missed him and he asked me to hang out one day. I was super excited to see him again and I was really looking forward to building our relationship over. He came over to my place and we talked for a bit. We watched movies, we cuddled, we kissed, and you know, we did other stuff the other stuff went on for hours and i mean hours because we had not talked to each other for three whole years we broke up a really long time ago and once we reconnected we could not keep our hands off of each other we cuddled and watched movies for the rest of the night and eventually i drift off to sleep i woke up in the middle of the night to him getting dressed and i asked why he was leaving and where he needed to go because i really wanted him to stay the night he says he can't miss this wedding that he's supposed to go to early in the morning and i understood and i asked him who was getting married and to tell them congrats he said thanks it's my wedding and then he left This is probably the most tragic and preventable airplane accident you'll ever hear about. The facts of this story are so shocking that when the audio of what led to the disaster was discovered, investigators and airline officials couldn't believe their ears. The audio of this disaster is so unsettling, but I will include it at the end of this story. On March 23, 1994, Aeroflight 593 was on its way from Russia to Hong Kong. On this flight, there were 63 passengers and 12 crew members, nine of which were flight attendants. Then there were three pilots responsible for flying the plane. Two of the passengers on board were 16-year-old Elder Kudrinsky and 12-year-old Yana Kudrinsky. And they were the son and daughter of Yaroslav Kudrinsky, who was one of the pilots on this plane. Yaroslav was taking his kids on their first international flight, and he was a proud pilot and wanted to show his kids his workplace, but he may have went a little too far. As they were nearing Hong Kong, Yaroslav invited his kids into the cockpit, which is the front of the plane where all of the controls are. This wasn't a problem until Yaroslav encouraged his kids to get into the captain's seat and take turns flying the plane. He would soon regret this decision. Part 2 of what happened to Aeroflight 593. So pilot Yaroslav Kudrinsky asked his 12-year-old daughter Yana if she would like to get into the pilot seat and fly the plane. Yana was a bit scared, but her father encouraged her that it would be fine. Now, Yaroslav wasn't actually going to let her fly the plane. He would only make it seem like she was. Once she got into the pilot seat, autopilot would be turned on. He would press some controls that would turn the plane slightly to the left, and it would feel like she was actually the one turning the plane to the left. She kind of felt the control handle turning itself, so she knew it wasn't actually her taking control. Once she was done, it was now his 16-year-old son Eldar's turn. Now, when Eldar got into the pilot seat, his dad messed with controls to make it seem like Eldar was flying the plane just like he did for Yana. Then he put the controls back to normal, which leveled the plane out. Then he left Eldar in the pilot's seat and got distracted and started talking to his daughter Yana. While Yaroslav wasn't paying attention, Eldar was in the pilot's seat, forcing the control handle to go into the direction that he wanted, which was fighting the autopilot, so the autopilot disconnected. Now 16-year-old Eldar is actually in control and is flying the plane. Part 3 of what happened to Aeroflight 593 16-year-old Eldar is in the pilot seat of Aeroflight 593 while it's in the air after being given permission from his father, Yaroslav, who was a pilot on the plane. Eldar accidentally disconnects the autopilot and is now actually in control of flying the plane, which has 75 occupants in total. Yaroslav was completely distracted, so he didn't notice anything was wrong until Eldar asked, why is the plane turning? In which Yaroslav responds, is it turning itself? Eldar responds, yes. The plane is now at a sharp 90 degree angle and it keeps turning every second. At this point, Yaroslav should have immediately removed his son from the pilot seat and took control of the aircraft. But he didn't. He just stood over Eldar in the pilot seat, looking at the controls, trying to figure out what's wrong. Before they know it, the plane is going down at about 40,000 feet per minute. But the plane is going down at an angle. They're almost upside down. It's like going down the hill of a roller coaster, so they're being pinned back to their seats. Because of the amount of pressure from the plane going down, pinning everyone back to their seats, Eldar is unable to get out of the pilot seat. Part 4 of what happened to Aeroflight 593 Now all Yaroslav can do is yell demands at his 16 year old son who has no knowledge on flying an airplane so he can try and get the plane back on course before they all crash and die. The plane is being flipped in all different directions, upside down, on its side, the passengers are being tossed around like Caesar salad. Make sure to watch my Instagram story for the full animation and real audio recording. But I do warn you guys, it is very unsettling. Eventually, Yaroslav was able to get Elder out of the seat and take control, but it was too late. The plane lost too much altitude and was flying too low and crashed into some mountains. There were no survivors. And what makes this even worse is that they were only 8 minutes away 
away from their destination. After further investigation, they found that all Elder had to do to keep the plane from going down was let go of the control handle and the autopilot would have reconnected itself and set the plane back on course. Thursday, so let's talk about one of the worst moms in history. China Arnold was a 28 year old mom who microwaved her 28 day old baby. Here are the train of events that led China to microwaving her baby. August 29, 2005, China Arnold and her baby father, Terrell Talley, got into an argument in the middle of the night allegedly. They were arguing because Terrell did not believe that he was the father of China's baby. During this argument, Terrell confessed to sleeping with a neighbor and China was drunk during this argument and that set her off. This angered China to the point where she put her baby in the microwave for more than two whole minutes. She later on said that she microwaved her baby because she was drunk and she was afraid that Terrell might find out that he wasn't the baby's father. DNA tests later on concluded that Terrell was in fact the baby's father. Later on she took her baby to the hospital and the baby died in the hospital the next day. So the hospital got the police involved. Investigators found that the burns on the baby were very similar to a case they had worked where a baby had been microwaved. What's even more disgusting is she got witnesses to lie for her and say that they saw China's nephew put her baby in the microwave. But China's nephew had an alibi. And so they charged China and sentenced her to life in prison. Am I wrong for leaving my husband after I found out that he had cancer? So my husband and I had been married for about 10 years before we started becoming distant. A little while after, he actually cheated on me with one of my close friends. After that, nothing was ever the same between me and him. Now don't get me wrong, I still loved him, but things could never go back to the way they used to be. Eventually, he fell sick, started losing a lot of weight, having trouble breathing, getting random rashes on his skin. So we both agreed that he should go to the hospital to get checked. So he went to the hospital and had to wait a few days to get the results. A few days had passed, so he went back to the hospital to get his results. When he came back home, I asked him what his results were. He said everything was fine. There was nothing to worry about. Then he put his keys on the counter and hopped into the shower. A couple days before, I had lost my credit card. I looked everywhere for it, couldn't find it, but the only place I didn't look was my husband's car. So I grabbed his keys while he was in the shower and I went to his car to look for my credit card. I was thinking maybe it fell out of my wallet while I was sitting in one of the seats. While I was looking for the credit card, I found a folder from the hospital he just went to. When I looked inside the folder, there was his test result. It was a biopsy test that confirmed he had cancer. So I went back inside to confront him for lying to me. Come back for part two. This is part two of the story of me leaving my husband after I found out that he had cancer. So after I found the positive test results in his car that confirmed he had cancer, I went back inside to confront him for lying to me. I was sitting down waiting for him to get out of the shower. But then I kind of decided that I didn't want to confront him. Our marriage was already going downhill and I was already having thoughts about leaving him anyway. I mean, he did cheat on me with my close friend. I know this might make me sound like a terrible person, but I didn't want to be there for him. I didn't want to be his main support system mentally or physically. And cancer is a lot to deal with. I didn't want to be in and out of the hospital, spending multiple days there, sleeping there, paying all of the bills myself. It would be too much for me. So I decided I was going to pack my things and leave without telling him when or why. And I mean, he didn't know that I knew he had cancer, so he wouldn't think that I was leaving him because of that. So I knew I needed to leave before he decided to tell me he had cancer, so it didn't look like I left him because of that. So the next day, he went to work, and then I went to work. As in, packing all my stuff, and then I left. Afterwards, he kept begging me to come back, so I blocked him, and I haven't talked to him since. Story time on how I slept with my brother. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. And I mean, we really gonna get straight to the point here. So I have a brother, he's 12 and I'm 18. And yes, he is my full biological brother. Me and my brother have always been really close ever since we were little. We did everything together. From bubble bats when we were young, to watching all our favorite shows and movies together, to even playing sports together. We were always just super close and inseparable. My mom and dad would leave us home alone while they were at work because they were way too cheap to get a babysitter and i eventually got to an age where i could look after both me and my brother years of constant alone time and good vibes led us to one day watching a netflix movie and cuddling a scene came on that was a bit risque and it kind of just set the mood me and my brother looked at each other and we just started kissing and eventually right there on the couch we did the nasty i can follow for part two
Part two on how I slept with my brother. Okay, so boom, like I said, after watching Netflix and cuddling, me and my brother looked in each other's eyes and then we started kissing. And then that led to us doing the nasty right on the couch. And yes, this is my biological brother. Ever since that day, whenever we're home alone, we continue to sleep with each other and have great times and memories. One day, my mom came home early and seen us on the couch kissing. She ran over to us, separated us, and started screaming. She told our dad and we got in big trouble. They they talked to us about how this is inappropriate and how brothers and sisters aren't supposed to be intimate but they don't know that we went all the way they placed cameras all over the house and now me and my brother never have a chance to be with each other i know it's wrong but they won't stop us we'll find another way to be together because we're in love wish me luck guys <laughs> My little sister got blueberries stuck up her kitty cat continuation okay so boom as you guys know i told y'all the story about how my little sister got blueberries stuck up her kitty cat and ended up in the hospital well this is a continuation because she did it again if y'all need a refresher of the story just scroll down until you see me with blue hair so it's been a year since my little sister did that blueberry incident her and the guy she was trying to impress broke up and she's been single ever since but now she's talking to a new guy and they recently just did the nasty but unfortunately after they did the nasty her boyfriend told her that it stinks down there she of course was mortified she took perfume that was alcohol based and sprayed it all down there then she did the nasty with her boyfriend again and they both started burning down there you guys wouldn't believe what happened to the both of them after that like and follow for part two Part two on how my little sister got blueberry stuck up her kitty cat. Continuation. Okay, so boom, like I said, as you guys know, I told the story about how my little sister got blueberry stuck up her kitty cat and it ended up in the hospital. This is a continuation to that story because she did it again. If you need a refresher, scroll down my page until you see me with blue hair to see the story. Again, so boom, like I said, my little sister new boyfriend told her that she stinks down there. And because she was mortified, she took perfume and sprayed it down there. Then proceeded to do the nasty with him again and both of their down there areas started burning because of course the alcohol in perfume they both were in the hospital and they were very much embarrassed both his parents and my parents didn't know that they were even sexually active and now they're both being treated ladies please don't spray anything or stick anything down there it's not natural Story time on how I found out my best friend was sleeping with my boyfriend while on the phone with me. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So I was in what I later realized was a very bad relationship. But at the time, this dude was like a religion to me. I was crazy about him. My best friend at the time, sort of a mean girl, but I wasn't very good at making friends, so I put up with her being cruel to people. She would never do anything to hurt me, right? Anyways, that relationship started getting abusive, but I kept with it because you know i was young and stupid i convinced myself that if i tried a little harder everything would just fix itself it didn't and after a few months we broke up sometime later i was at a party and my best friend was a bit drunk and that's when she told me while laughing the entire time how she and my ex were sleeping with each other literally two weeks after we started dating and it gets worse like and follow for part two 
Part two on how I found out my best friend was sleeping with my boyfriend while on the phone with me. Okay, so boom, like I said, my relationship with my boyfriend became abusive, so we broke up. Fast forward a couple weeks and I was at a party with my best friend and she was a bit drunk. She told me while laughing the entire time how she and my ex were sleeping with each other literally two weeks after I started dating him. Then she goes in details about how they would do the nasty while he was talking to me on the phone phone mind you she's laughing while saying this she went into detail on all the ways and places they used to sneak around to sleep with each other and this was the girl i would cry to when my ex would abuse me she didn't seem to have any idea that what she was saying was literally messed up she actually thought that i would find it funny too safe to say that that friendship ended be careful for fake friends out there y'all Story time on how I caught my dad sleeping with my sister, his biological daughter. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So my mom passed away when I was 10 years old. Me, my dad, and sister grieved the loss of our mom slash wife and honored her as best as we could. But the loss of our mom hit our dad pretty rough. Due to the loss, for about four years, he continued to suffer from depression. But recently, my dad has been happy. The happiest I've seen him in a long time. And it kind of came out of nowhere, but of course I was happy for my dad. I'm now 14 and my sister is 12 and everyone always says how much my little sister looks like my mom. Literally my mom's twin and mini me. I thought nothing of it, but little did I know my sister looking like my mom would make my dad do some disgusting things. Like and follow for part two. Part two on how I caught my dad sleeping with my sister. His biological daughter. Okay, so boom, like I said, after my mom passed away, my dad became depressed until a couple years later, he just wasn't. Watch part one to understand. Now I'm 14 and my sister's 12 and everyone is saying my sister looks like my mom. Literally twins, she is the mini me of my mom. And I guess my dad seen this too and he became obsessed with my little sister. He would dress my little sister up as my mom and even became way too affectionate with her. For some reason my little sister liked this attention but like I knew it was wrong. But I didn't know how far my dad would take it. One day I was in my room and I heard moaning and it sounded like my sister and it was coming from my dad's room. So I go over there, and yeah, it's exactly what y'all think. I called and told my auntie, and now my dad's in jail. We're living with our auntie, and my sister's in counseling. Be safe. This is why you should be very careful who you talk to online. A 16-year-old girl was home with her mom when she got a disturbing text message from a boy she had recently met on Snapchat. He told her he was right outside of her house, but when she went to look, no one was there. Frightened, she decides to sleep in her mom's room that night, and right before she goes to bed, she gets another text from the boy that just says, I'm in your house. She shows her mom, who immediately searches the whole house, checks every door, turns on every light, there's no one there. So even though they're creeped out, they go back to bed. The next morning she gets up and she goes back to her bedroom and immediately feels like she's being watched. She checks in her closet, looks behind her door, there's no one there. Then she noticed that the shoe boxes she normally kept perfectly arranged next to her bed had been moved. So she crouches down to put them back in order and then out of the corner of her eyes she notices something. The boy who was texting her was under her bed. 
Can you solve this mystery? This is the story of two friends who got into an accident while they were camping. But someone is hiding something and not everything is as simple as it might seem. All the clues to what really happened are hidden in what I'm about to say. So these two friends, a young man and woman, went camping together in the woods. The man said that he knew his way around because he went camping there all the time. So he ended up leading the way. They arrived at a long rope bridge that they both had to cross to get to the other side. The woman went first, but something was wrong. One of the boards on the rope bridge came loose. She accidentally stepped through, but managed to grab the rope just in time to save herself from falling. She shouted to her friend for help, but he said that he was too scared to get on the bridge now. She finally pulled herself up to safety where her friend said, are you okay? She said, yeah, I'm fine, but that could have ended up a lot worse. And her friend replied, you're right. Someone should really fix the ropes on the bridge. What really happened here? And who's the one that's hiding something? Can you solve this mystery? Be careful what you put in your body. In 2014, a couple returned to their home to find it trashed in baffling ways. There was lotion all over the door handles. All of their shoes had had their soles ripped off of them, and someone had dumped an entire can of paint all over the toilet. Despite the obvious break-in, the police come and can't find any evidence of theft, so they leave thinking the couple's not in danger anymore. That night, the couple hears scratching underneath their bed and what sounds like a crying animal. Not wanting to find out what it was, they leave and call the cops who come right back and start investigating the house and they make a startling discovery in their bedroom. Wedged underneath the couple's bed was this 90 pound tiny little woman carrying a huge butcher's knife and a hypodermic needle. As they're taking this crazy lady away in handcuffs, one of the officers comes over to the couple and is like, so she was high on meth and for at least two hours, she had been burrowing a hole in the underside of your mattress with that knife to get to you. Three months after I was born, my family moved into a different house in a new neighborhood. My mom told me that after we moved, even though I was just a baby, I started acting differently. She said that in the middle of the night, she'd hear me laughing. And she'd look at the baby camera monitor and I'd be standing in my crib reaching out as if there was someone in the room I was reaching for, but there was no one there. Once I got older and started talking, my mom told me that I would always talk about the man in the hat. And sometimes I would get upset and start crying and ask my mom where he was because I wanted to play with him. But my mom thought I just had an imaginary friend. But as I grew up, the man in the hat never went away. I kept talking about him. Eventually, my mom got worried and took me to a child psychologist when I I was five years old and I don't really remember it but during the sessions the psychologist would ask me questions about the man in the hat but apparently whenever she referred to him as my imaginary friend I would get really angry and defiant and say he's not imaginary and when she asked me what he was like I was able to describe him in vivid detail he wore a blue baseball hat and dark glasses at all times a long sleeve turtleneck and pants after five sessions the psychologist concluded that I probably just had a really intense imagination which is common for little kids but the psychologist warned my mom that she should keep a close eye on it